happened to Tamir Goodman? Well, see, Tamir Goodman was only a junior in high school, and we did that story right. last year. University of Maryland has been a buzz recently with that gentleman right there, Tamir Goodman. Tamir averages better than 31 points a game, eight assists, and seven rebounds. Tamir, who stands six feet three inches tall, is one of the best high school guards in the country, and he's an Orthodox Jew. Goodman made a non-binding commitment to accept a scholarship to the University of Maryland. But due to a series of events, he withdrew that commitment in September of last year and later signed a letter of intent to play at Towson University. What followed were questions about everything from Tamir's skills to whether or not he had a future playing Division I basketball at all. The people saying, well, maybe he's not as good as everybody made him out to be. This guy is very special. I realize God gave me this talent, and if I use it in the wrong way, I realize he could take it away from me just as fast as... He gave it to me. Hi, I'm Tamir Goodman. You may remember me as the Jewish Jordan. The Jewish Jordan. The Jewish Jordan. You know, when you're famous, um, it's it's a really lonely place. I just have my family and my school and my friends and my synagogue. I'm not sure you could ever imagine, you know, when you're 17, how much that would change your life. You know, I'm 37 now and I still can't understand it, you know, what it meant to go through all that at such a young age. My favorite thing in the world was playing basketball. And we had a hoop in our backyard. Um, I was probably 9, 10 years old. And I just looked at my hands and I said, use these hands right here to show the world that you can get a Division I scholarship to play uh, basketball and professional basketball without playing on Shabbat. You know, from sundown Friday to sundown Saturday, you're not allowed to work. It was seen as impossible because all these teams play on Shabbat, and a lot of times the biggest games are on Shabbat. Growing up in this community, there's this, like, an expectation, and the last expectation is athletic. It's Torah study and it's high academic achievement. And here's a kid, he just wanted a ball. And the kind of energy and the vibe was like, okay, basketball's been great to you, but realistically, it's, you're not gonna be able to pursue this. So why don't you just cut out the basketball and focus on, on Torah study? What I learned through studying the Torah was, Judaism doesn't want you to take away your dreams and throw your dreams out the window. It's really the opposite. The whole point of Judaism is to take something physical and to turn it into something spiritual. So you could be a basketball player. God wants you to be a basketball player. Um, but try to play for the right reasons. Try to do good things through basketball. If Tamir played today with the way social media is, every single night there'd be something on social media. What he was doing was getting you out of your seat. If he blew up then, what would he be like now? I was very scared because people started to find out about me and there was a lot of high expectations for me and I didn't know if I was gonna be able to pass my SATs because another challenge that happened after that was that, you know, I had been diagnosed uh, with severe uh, dyslexia. And uh, I only found out recently that the doctor who diagnosed me told my coach, he's like, I, I don't even know how this kid could play. And I said, why is that? He said, because he can't tell the difference between a circle and a square. Like, we'd be beating somebody by 30 something points and he'd look at a teammate and just go, are we winning? It was very, very frustrating. Simple tasks on a daily basis that other people could do are very hard for you. What God hindered him with, God blessed him with something else. And his vision was honestly as good as anybody I've ever seen play basketball. Even at a very young age that I could kind of see things on the court that not only other people wouldn't see, but that were about to happen that didn't happen. I turn him around and practice in the middle of a play and just tell him what do you see and he could tell you exactly where everybody was. Radio broadcasters, analysts, just people would come over to me after the game and say, well, how did you see that? You know, how did you make that pass? And I would just say, 
It's a hidden blessing of being dyslexic. Just see things differently. The week after I committed to play at the University of Maryland, I was ranked the 25th best player in the nation, and my life completely changed. Jerry Seinfeld, I think, did a full skit about the Jewish Jordan. Um, ABC, NBC, ESPN, Sports Illustrated, four-page article in Sports Illustrated, nicknamed the Jewish Michael Jordan. It just started to get too crazy in that there were cameras inside school. Uh, I'd go home, there were cameras. I remember going to services with my father on Friday night. There was reporters inside the temple. It was just completely undescribable. Basically, I couldn't stay there for my senior year if I wanted to continue playing basketball. After having to transfer to the Christian school, everything that happened at Maryland, here in Towson, things are going really well. We won more games than the schools won in many years. We had a great group of guys, a great group of friends, but coach called me up um, during spring break and he said, there's gonna be a press conference tomorrow. Got some pretty bad news. And I said, what, what's going on coach? He's like, yeah, I've just been fired. The entire staff is, is fired. Um, so, uh, you know, I, was, I started to cry because I felt like by that point in my life, I, found, I just found a home at Towson University, you know. And then the new coach came in, and uh, very quickly I learned that it was going to be possible for me to stay at Towson as a Jewish athlete, um, no matter what I tried to do to make it better. I told him not to stay. Coach is bringing his own point guard. You need to go. And Tamir's ferociously loyal. You know, they, they gave me an opportunity here, so I'm gonna, and it turned out to bite them. I broke down uh, emotionally, spiritually, physically. It's the lowest I've ever been in my life. I had to say bye to my teammates. That was the last time I ever played college basketball again. One day I just woke up, I don't know how many months after, and I just thought to myself, everyone has their journey. And if I'm not playing basketball, I'm basically not alive. Maybe that's why it was him that this was supposed to happen to. God knew Tamir could handle it. And are you going to make your creator proud or embarrassed? I dedicated my entire life. I pushed myself to tears in training almost every single day. How can you wrap your head around that? You can't. A dream is just a dream without a goal, and he had a goal, he reached his goal. Before people got to know me a little bit in Baltimore, they would make fun of the way that I looked. I was very, very skinny. And a lot of people, they would call me Howdy Doody. The galloping ghost, you take a kid that's struggling in life, for example, they don't have self-confidence, and somehow through basketball, you teach them how to have self-confidence. That's almost a higher level of joy than just something you may have accomplished uh, as a player. The greatest moment for me was meeting my wife, Judy. I am extremely blessed that I'm able to do exactly what I want to do, where I want to be doing it with my wife, Judy, and five amazing kids. Obviously, I'll always miss playing basketball. There's almost nothing like hitting a big shot or making a great play. That, that is gone, you know, you can never really do that, but feel that happiness again. But I've been able to live out my dream because the bottom line is, it was thought to be impossible. As an observant Jew that wasn't gonna play on the Jewish Sabbath or on the holidays growing up, that, that's impossible. You're never gonna play in college or professionally. But at the end of the day, I was able to fulfill my dream with my keeper on. I think ultimately, Tamir's life is a story of righteousness. One guy living his dream and then not letting someone else define his success. I think that's what his story is, a story of righteousness.